just like a Buddhist monk, I hold on to no material possessions. Right. The steps were never mine. That's right. I was just a, we had just met at a point in time. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast, baby. I am Spencer Cardia. I'm a generic white male. What does that mean? Hello, Frank. Wait, that's Frank. <laughs> it's you too, I'm guessing. I'm not generic. Aww. Um, what is it? Like I said, when you jump into my introduction, I don't know what to do. Okay. <laughs> this here is Frank looking a little French today. Um, how are you guys? If you hear any kind of weird sounds today, we have some jackhammers going on right outside the window. Yeah. Right when we're trying to podcast. Um, so... The Johnny Depp defamation trial is going on. Yes. He sued his ex-wife because he said because of her stories around town, people don't want to work with him anymore. Uh, yesterday, no, the day before, I don't, it, yeah, one of these days, there was uh, the police officer who had um, answered a call to their penthouse one day. Okay. And it was, um, it wasn't Johnny. It was a friend yeah. of his ex-wife. Um, and they asked this, this, uh, police officer, it, it was a Hispanic female police yeah. officer and they asked her, so who was there? And she said, a man answered the door and they're like, well, who? she said, he's a generic white male. And, um, and then, you know, it was a bit, people were like laughing at it. And on cross-examination, um, Johnny's lawyer just kept saying it over and over. So the generic white male <laughs> escorted you through the house. The generic white male, did he say anything to you? The yeah. generic white male. And so um, I decided to be a generic white male today. So you were offended by that statement. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It just means, so they asked the police officer. They said, like, what does that mean? Why are you saying that? And she's like, because there was nothing about him that I can tell you. You know what I mean? Like he had a giant beard or yeah. he had a scar. Well, that's, his... uh, that's what I'm saying. It, it, generic means you're not unique. Uh, nobody wants to be generic. Well, you, I don't sure think you'd there. mind if if the other choice was he was hideous looking. <laughs> well, I don't think I'd be a very professional <laughs> statement. It's like, oh, he was really tall and handsome. Mm -hmm. A tall, handsome man. Like that's If someone was no, talking about subjective. me. Well, Joe's generic. Someone else could look at that man and say, he wasn't generic at all. Well, look at his dazzling blue eyes. She's a police officer, so she sees thousands and thousands of people that she has to explain. And, and I'm guessing that guy doesn't stand out. It, you know, it'd be hard for his lineup for someone to choose because poor guy. Well, quit. shout out to that ger generic white male. Um, hopefully, one day you are not seen as generic. So she'll, they would say like, um, if they were describing you, they'd say a unique white male. I don't like that either. <laughs> <laughs> now that I think about it, that, that might be <laughs> and so, a very obscure white male. <laughs> Never seen anything like it. Um, hard to explain even. Yeah. You said we have sounds outside of our, our studio. Do. And so on this trial, um, they are having a lot of Zoom witnesses. Okay. And so the Zoom witnesses are in their... Respective homes. Respective homes, jobs, you know. Offices, um, um, outdoors maybe. <laughs> well, you wouldn't think so, right? Oh, uh, yeah. So, like, the police officer, you could tell, was in a police station yeah. to, the, to the point she she had a mask on. Mm. And I'm looking and I'm thinking, why does she have a mask on? It's a Zoom. Um, because she was She's somewhere people. that needs to have a mask. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so people, uh, they interviewed a woman in the Bahamas and she was just in a room. Um, today, uh, yesterday, there was a, a, a witness. He was in a car and he was driving. Are you serious? I loved it. Even at the end, the judge was like, I have never experienced that. And the lawyer's like, yeah, once he started driving, like, yeah, this guy, he is driving his car. Is that even legal? Like, is it a, like a, a court room of police? I wonder. That are like, you are using your phone while you're driving, sir. Yeah. But I did hear, I heard construction sounds. I heard things. So if, if it is okay for a witness, it's okay for us. If it's okay for a witness. It's okay for us. You heard it here first. But um, yeah, we're getting our, our, uh, our patio redone. Now, I had made these be beautiful cement stairs. And by beautiful, they weren't, weren't that beautiful, but they were mine. They were they were functional. They were functional. Quakerish, you Quake, could say. Yeah, they, they were. Or shaker, is it? Quaker shaker. Qu it was sure. a Quaker shaker, <laughs> of, a Quaker of, shaker of, steps. of steps. But I uh, woke up this morning to the house rattling. Breaking it, breaking it down. Just breaking down my steps. And you know what? It's okay. This is a Christian podcast. And 
maybe I was given a little bit too much value to those steps. Those steps provided a lot of people walking yeah. over the past couple of years. Right. And now it's time to say goodbye. Doesn't change the fact that those steps were in our lives for a bit of time. Just like people. You're really growing um, as a uh, as a Taurus that you're able to um, see it like that. And um... I'm saying it like that. <laughs> I am dying inside. Those, I love those stupid oh, I know, steps. I know, you know. I, I don't care how nice. I don't care how nice the new steps are. Neither do I. I'm going to look. Oh, look! Look at these beautiful. No, my steps had character. Well, and it, the worst part. So I made these cement steps. I'm just going to keep talking. During quarantine. About, during quarantine. Mm-hmm. And um. And you're not a cement step maker. I'm. I'm not a cement man. It was a DIY. It was a DIY. And and I was seeing in them, because. I didn't have that much cement. Right. So I put all cobblestones well, in there. Well, guess what? At the time, remember, construction supplies yeah. were extremely limited. At an all-time low. And so I was just watching them and just seeing all my cobblestones that were never meant to be unearthed. Unearthed. And I said... Oh, you mean you, underneath you had put... Yeah. To take up space and... To take and up space because it's like, why yeah. Why does it need to be full cement? It's right. like, oh, I'm going to throw all these stones in here. Doesn't matter. They're back living their happy cobblestone lives outside of the cement to let you know i did not vote when when, when the board met you know for um the kirk and crow y- yays and nays the kirk and crow nest i voted against destroying spencer's steps i was outvoted and but i would have left them just like a buddhist monk i hold on to no material possessions right the steps were never mine that's right i was just a we had just met at a point in time. And what is time? <laughs> An abstract concept. <laughs> but how you doing, guys? It is... I'm going to get the date right today. Watch Are this. You, I don't know. Hey, watch this. Know. Yeah, I get the date right wrong every single day. Today's April 28th. Stamp that mark that remember that. That's right. Yeah. April 28th. Very end of April. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very end. Um, holidays. I'll tell you. It's okay. National um, Blueberry Pie Day. I, I don't know what's happening. About what? Because you're saying holidays recently that do not go with, like, it's not blueberry season. It's not pie season. Like, why is April 28th blueberry pie season? I want it to match. So if it was sometime in the summer, I would accept this. this. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. Like, it, it should be like. Blueberry pie Like, all. Like, why would, uh, say, National Ice Cream Day be in February? Yeah. I don't know when it is, but it's like. Right. Shouldn't that be in the summer? Right. Yeah. Unless it's what you've said before which is they're trying to drum up business now then again do we know when blueberry season starts well it's in the summer it's not april are you sure that's not yes i'm sure i'm sure people aren't like yeah huckleberry finn and blueberry fingers it's like it's kind of tom sawyer and and you're in and you're in the summer and you're barefoot and you rolled up your you rolled up your pants blueberry picking well do you even eat blueberry pie for someone who's so passionate about it (laughs) I don't like pie. I don't like. Do you like shepherd's pie? I like savory pies, yes, yeah. and hand pies. Uh, uh, pizza these. pie, maybe. <laughs> eh, not so much. Um, and I don't particularly like blueberries. I I feel like there's always um remnants. Okay. Do you know what I mean? I don't eat blueberries. Skin or stem or something. I'm not really. Know. I'm not really a fruit person. So once I try to make um, and when I say once, I mean a couple months ago. I tried to make blueberry hair dye. I remember that. I think it's still in the fridge. Mm. <laughs> okay. it didn't work um actually i was trying to reduce them i don't know what i was doing but it just turned grayer and grayer and grayer um natural dye is extremely hard and yeah. that's why in the old days the colors were <laughs> muted and not like today like bright well blue. that's a, and i mean just because you brought it up blue was the most expensive color to use back in the day I because bet. it was the hardest color to make and there was like Azul or some some kind of like rock that like was very rare mm-hmm. and it would make this beautiful blue pigment. But I believe it. Besides that, I don't think many people had blue hair predating, you know, uh, artificial dyes. Yeah. But to bh, to bh, it's like <laughs> tbh, but yeah. I say the first two words. Um, I don't really care for many of the other holidays, okay. so I'm not going to speak on them. Okay, so you said blue and blue hair, and um, in the old days, you would say that old women had blue the blue haired ladies oh. nowadays it's like it's young it's cool in the old days it was sort of a a, a mistake oh. so the old women had white hair yeah and they would i think they would get like a blue rinse at the hairdresser you go like once a week yeah and um if you did it wrong it actually came out blue <laughs> so these 
these little pearl wear necklace wearing old women with their white um, perms had like bluish hair. A bluish And it was tint. totally not acceptable at that, that time. Yeah. Um, so like his shirt is white, bright white. Bright white. Generic so white shirt. In Trinidad, I don't know about America because I know, I just never experienced it in America. In Trinidad, they sell the... They sell the you drop that every podcast, that penny. <laughs> <laughs> the um, they sell these squares of blue. It's called blue, I think. Yeah. It's, a, it's like a chalk, like a blue fat square. Okay. You throw it in your white laundry. And? It keeps it white? Makes it whiter. Oh. I think it's also made, like, if people know about makeup, or I think even, like, when you get your teeth whitened, there's something about blue that brings out the white. Okay. So maybe it's that's like, even having to do with the hair. hair. Yeah, like, when you're right. dealing with white hair... Style, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, maybe yeah, we deal with white hair. You use blue, but if it's the wrong type of... Right, or too much, or, you know. Not enough. Yeah. Who knows? Who I don't knows? know. But, um, yeah, so it is Thursday. It's my favorite day of the week. Yeah. Um, counting down to my birthday, by the way. I know. We are... We are. Oh, wait. No. Yesterday was exactly two weeks. Mm-hmm. So we are now... Oh, with, two weeks. Now okay. we're now within two weeks of my birthday. Right. Um, I'm excited. Hope you guys are excited. We're going to have a big birthday bonanza. Yeah. You're all invited. And um, you have your Amazon wish list. I do. So people can send that to you. Yes. It's um, it's all Q-tips and rubber bands. <laughs> so today's Thursday, guys. And on Thursday, we do a very special thing. The special thing that we do is called Walk, Walk Through, Through Thursday. Thursday. Roll the intro, please. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Cuz walk through Wednesday just begun. What is up, guys? It is walk through Thursday. How are you doing? What are we doing walk through Thursday? We walk and we talk and we read and we think. We open up the Bible. Bible's open. How y'all doing? Bible's open. And we pick a verse. Mm -hmm. We also pick a verse every day. Give a little Instagram plug. On Instagram, we were doing polls every single day. Bible verses versus Bible verse. Book versus book to see which book reigns supreme in this March, April, May madness. Yeah. And we're about so, to get to, we only have a couple left. A couple left. For and that then, first yes, breakdown. Yes, the first leg. And then it's going to be the second round of the Bible bracket. So um, look out for that at Crow and Crow. You know where to find us. Back to what we do in Walk Through Thursday. We pick a Bible verse mm-hmm. and we slow it down, break it down, chop it down. We walk through it slowly and together and we find a deeper meaning in it. Mm -hmm. Um, There's so many, you will run out of, talk about, talk about Bible verses against each other. Yeah. You won't have enough in a year if you do one every day. Yeah. A lot of them we talk about a lot. You won't have enough. (laughs) You have more. You won't have enough days Days. in the year to read a Bible verse every day. Right. You'll need multiple years. Yes. So we just pick one and we just learn a little bit more about it. Maybe you've never heard it before. That's exciting. Yeah. So, um, yeah, let's just get into it, shall we? So we are reading out of the book of Ecclesiastes today. Yeah. We don't read out of Ecclesiastes that much. Do we not? We don't read out of the book of Ecclesiastes that much, but that's what makes it exciting. Yeah. Um, we has, has Ecclesiastes was done in the poll. I wonder if it won. You know, it did. It won seventy five percent. Seventy five percent. Oh wow! So we're gonna read a verse. It is out out of Ecclesiastes seven verse five. Simple How ones. How funny! Seventy five percent. Oh. Seventy five. Um. Did you realize that your verse today was your birthday? I did. Six. Wait, no, three six. Three six. Um. Malachi. No, that was yesterday. So this is a short verse today, but uh, I think it has a lot to talk about. Mm-hmm. Simple verse, say it once, and you only need to say it once. Better to be criticized by a wise person than praised by a fool. That's it. Better to be criticized by a wise person than praised by like a, a fool. It sounds like a proverb. It does sound like a proverb. Like if some, if we were doing a, you know, a, a test, a multiple choice or something, yeah. or a different poll, is this Ecclesiastes or proverb? I would, mm. I would very confidently say that's a proverb. Yes. Yeah. It's short. It's a little bit of knowledge. Yeah, it's that little... Boom. You just need one verse real quick. Yeah. Boom. Oh, I wonder what would happen if Ecclesiastes goes against Proverbs. Oh, that will be spicy. <laughs> That'll be a spicy day in the Bible bracket. But, um, all right, let's just, let's, let's talk about this. Okay. It's better to be criticized by a wise person than praised by a fool. Okay. So the face value, I mean, like, it's one of those ones that, like, makes sense. Of course. But we're, we're going to get a little deeper in it. So 
first word criticized. Nobody wants to be criticized. Yes. And I really don't think you're supposed to criticize, right? No, constructive criticism. Okay. So, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Constructive criticism versus harsh criticism is you do this wrong versus you could do this better. Okay. And um, then praised by a fool, which is the opposite of crit. It's not you could do this better. It's, oh my gosh, you're so great. No room for improvement. No room for improvement. And I think this verse is so important because how do I put this? It makes very black and white wise and a fool, but it's not, it's you, you don't always know when it's like, oh, well, that's a fool. That's a wise person. Cause then it would always be, well, obviously I'm going to listen to him, but I feel like sometimes we find ourselves in circles or attracted to circles that oh, right. make yeah. us feel wiser, make us feel better. Yes. And it's intimidating to walk into circles of people like it's even just a thing of like show me your friends and i'll show you your future and just yeah. like who you surround yourself by right nobody wants to be the dumbest person in a room no and i'm not saying you should be looking at like go hang out with aerospace engineers just because of how smart they are like you do kind of want to be in your bracket but it's important that you grow and you can never grow in an environment where you're always just being praised like it is good to be criticized, like constructively yeah. criticized. Right. Um, if everyone always said, you know, from the first grade, you're the smartest person ever. What, what's the desire to learn more? And um. And and so I guess you could say. So it starts off. Sorry, did I interrupt you? No. Okay. Um. So it starts off. It's better to be criticized. Now it would be best if you were perfect. Yes. And you didn't need any correction, any any instruction, any um, you know, input. But we're not. Yeah. So it's better to be criticized um, by, what was it? Why? The wise. The wise. Okay. And, and and since we're not perfect and we can't see ourselves, um, I, I learned a trick once and it was when you're drawing to, and you think it's good, you think you like it, you think you have the, um, what's that word? Like the scale or whatever, yeah. down. To put it upside down. Yeah. And um you see it differently yeah because because before you were seeing what you had meant to put on the page it's another reason why when you when when you have an editor yeah so you write and you you know what you wrote you want it your essay or your book or whatever to to read like this you could read it a hundred times and you keep reading something that's not there yeah the editor looks and says is it an editor or a copy copy checker or something uh yeah, yeah. um They'll be like, it, but it doesn't say that on, and you're like, you're absolutely kidding me. So yeah, yeah. We can't see. No, we can't see. And yeah, I, I think it's important because also we're on life to always learn. And like yeah. some of the smartest people that you ever meet will say, I've never want to stop learning. I, I, I always want to be a student. I never want to act as though I know everything. Right. And more than that, so it's better to be criticized. We're ultimately think like the way we're talking about it now has been um like constructive criticism mm -hmm. like you could do this better right but in uh, in a lot of other translations it's, it's better to be rebuked okay when i hear the word rebuked i think more challenged oh okay and in that sense i also like it right because if like criticized in the sense of negative criticism it's better to be negatively criticized by the wise than praised by the then positively praised. Then yeah. positively praised. It's like, why would that be a thing? But I think that's an important thing. Mm -hmm. And we always talk about that even with our Christianity and our speaking with other people. It's right. That's how you learn. Like, mm -hmm. if you never have criticism back, or if you never are rebuked, if you're never challenged on the things you know, or like and a smart person debating you is, is some of the best you know, self-knowledge you can get. Yeah. Because it's like, you're going back and forth rather than, yeah, rah, rah, what you said was right. And it's like, have people say what you're saying is wrong. Right. And that's what's going to make you dig deeper in yourself and challenge yourself even. Right. It's not just like, yeah, surround yourself with people. Let them tell you how to do things right. Right. It's let them tell you you're doing, let wise people. And you're like, I know they're wise. Challenge me. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Or yeah. tell, tell me what I'm doing is wrong. Right. And then I can in myself grow as a person. That's what you have, don't have to do, but... If you t just take the criticism and then you slink away yeah. and you feel ashamed because I was dumb yeah. or I missed that or I I shouldn't have done that, you know, 
then that's so i think it's two part when you have to do something with what you just heard yes and you bring this up to me all the time because so we do our instagram reels every day and sometimes we'll get negative comments yeah not negative but you can imagine it's go it's not our loyal supporters like you guys it goes out to everyone yeah and they're like you didn't even ask to see a christian yes video. And, and, and so they'll they'll like send a little shot at not at me or you or or crook and crow at christianity as a whole or right. whatever and you always say don't take it as a bad thing you are going to face all of these these questions and criticisms and stuff and let all of it be a learn a lesson of what do you say so that when you know in the future if you're on a higher platform you're not stumped by anything right and if up until then you're always praised by those around you so even like, even, like we can get rid of this fools and mm -hmm. um wise men and right. just say Pete, it's better to be criticized than to praise be yeah. praised and it's like really is it and it's like in a way yeah like in, in a way that's how you grow is right instead of shying away from it it's like i only want to say what everyone will agree with it's the way you can work on your own thoughts and opinions is to say things that you believe mm -hmm. and it's better that other people disagree with it and then you're able to come like you're able to learn from yeah you're a sports guy yeah said that lots of times i'm the biggest sports guy and imagine um there's so many sports analogies you could use here but i'm just thinking baseball because it's baseball season yeah it is it already is. well spring training or it's no it's seasons in the swing in swing no pun intended <laughs> in swing okay um you know say you were really good at like really good, like you know, um, home run hitter yeah. for certain pitches. Yeah, and like that's all you ever did. And I'm guessing in practice, they're they're throwing um, so many um, different pitches to this batter because you yeah, can't, you know, no, let's let's learn, let's you know. Yeah. Um. Well, I mean, and just with 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 baseball and and like that, it's also the same way of if you've ever seen them warming up and swinging mm -hmm. they have something on the bat it's, oh, a, it's yeah. a weight okay to make the bat heavier mm. so when you take the weight off that thing feels like it's light as air oh. and it's kind of the same way with being challenged and being attacked it, it's like if you grow in that if you grow in the criticism right. then when you don't like you're not being criticized and you are being praised it's it's because you've been challenged so many times right um look at and you can look at it as real world challenges you know like i love to bring up david's story of fighting a tiger and a bear before you fight right um goliath mm -hmm. and it's like was he destined to be king right yes but would it have been better if he was praised as a child as a king and was like well he can't fight goliath it's like all of those you know challenges all the like, which were like were physical rebukes right. physical um <laughs> criticisms of right. we're going to get you is what made him grow rather than pampering someone and, yeah. and saying you're perfect you're perfect you're perfect that person never learns right and and when you say that it makes me think that when i when you first hear the verse you say praise by fools and then you say like yeah why would i take praise by fools yeah. and you picture these people who like why are you even chiming yeah. in yeah but praise by fools i think from what you just said could be a very well-intentioned friend yeah and it's foolish the way that they are yes pampering you the word you, you just used yeah you know so because you might be on the lookout for like oh he's a fool but like what if it was just a foolish action of somebody who cared about you yeah and that's kind of what i was feeling at the end that's why i kind of took it away i'm like it's better to be it's better to be criticized than to pray than be praised like, okay and even in the very beginning i said it might be easy to to it's not as easy to understand what's a fool and what's a wise man right but in a way it, yeah it's just the action of like it's it's not saying it has to be a fool a foolish person right but it's it's saying what is ha like what is happening in the situation mm -hmm. you have two people one is being challenged one is being praised right whether it's a fool or a wise man the one who's being challenged is going to grow right i think that's an important takeaway it is also, um, you kind of quickly just referred to a different um, translation, says the word rebuked. Yes. So sometimes we talk about, um, we, we remind people yeah. that there's many translations of the Bible. BibleGateway.com. BibleGateway.com. Shout out. Shout out BibleGateway. It has a drop down box and you can choose the, the, um, the uh, translation yeah. that you like. And so also in our polls, 
um, we we really tend to use new international version. Yeah. But in the polls, some of them are not, and therefore, um, you know, like you said, that it might not sound exactly like you've heard it exactly before. The same. Right. And so a lot of people have their favorite translation. For me, I like looking at multiple translations because obviously a translation is just that it's translated. Mm -hmm. Right. And oh, this word can mean this, this word. And I feel like the more you look like we, if we only believed in one translation, if we said that's the only thing that can be right, right we would have never had that spin off of rebuked. Right. We would have, we might still be talking about um, constructive criticism yeah. and it would have been a completely different thought. Right. So I think sometimes it's, it's nice to look at. In, uh, when you talk to someone in another language, um, you might think that everything's a, like there's a word to word. Mm -hmm. Every word has a word. Mm -hmm. in, if it's in Spanish, it's in English. But sometimes like there'll be a Spanish word that it takes three English words to describe what it means. Right. Like, oh, well, no, it, it means like happy, but happy in a family right. situation. Right. It's like, oh, we, we don't have that. And that's kind of why I like looking at multiple translations because yeah. it's like whatever that original word means, it's like, well, obviously one person said rebuked, one person said criticize. And it's like, okay, so it's like it's some kind of rebuked, criticize, right. whatever that word is. And I think I like looking at multiple translations because of that. But um, that that's that. It was a short little verse today. A short and sweet, but yeah. it's a good one. I mean, I, I feel like those kind of, pro it's not from Proverbs, but those proverby yeah. verses are nice because... Sometimes it's a little reminder. Right. And if you feel like you're being challenged a lot and you're like, I'm being criticized. If, you know, on your Instagram comments, someone saying, hey, God, God's not real. You might just say, hey, it's better to be, it's better to be rebuked than to be praised. Right. And, and I'm growing as a person. Because <laughs> right. Of it. Anyway, we'll be back tomorrow for Dr. Seuss Friday. Please come out and see it. It's always a good one. New, new whole new book. New book, yeah. Whole new book this time. So come out for that. Until then, peace, love, prosperity. Go and be criticized. <laughs> Peace.